Well, hopefully through the charm, I've uh, had technical difficulties uh, twice now trying to uh, do this particular video. Um, so what I have is uh, just kind of playing off the, uh, again, the idea of, uh, say, a kidney transplant and, and uh, some sort of uh, preoperative or even post-operative score for uh, five-year survival rate of the kidney. Um, that's not necessarily of the person, they just may need another transplant, something like that, uh, or to uh, go on dialysis for a while, something. Uh, but um, so here, uh, our five year uh, zero or one, a zero is a failure. In other words, the kidney did not make it five years, and the one is that the kidney made it five years. These data happen to be sorted uh, both by a score of some kind. So this could be a composite score. It could be lots of things going to the score, uh, and it's more or less an average. And uh, we're just kind of keeping it simple for this example. Um, so I just have ones, twos, threes, fours, fives here. And, um, and so um, there are our data. And what we would like to do is um, produce some kind of fit where we can uh, predict the probability of failure or probability of success. Uh, in our case, since the ones are success, we're predicting the probability of success uh, of the kidney to make it five years. And um, uh, so we start with that. But the, again, the problem is uh, to do our transformation, um, we can't use zeros and ones. We have to use something else. And so uh, I think in the uh, uh, earlier videos I used 0 0.01 and 0 0.99 you know because those are they're close to zero uh, close to one and um, and so you know that's that's how I changed it now I used an, an if statement to do that I said equals if and then uh, b2 because b2 is where the um, number is so b2 equals one I'll put a 0.99, and if it's not 1, uh, I'll put a 0 0.01. So that's how this works. I give it a condition, uh, and then what happens if it's true, and then what happens if it's false. So I did that, and I copied it on down, you know, something like that. And, and so there I changed the data a little bit. I, I guess you could say I transformed it. I would probably prefer the word perturbed it, uh, you know, I, I just moved it slightly from where it was. But now here's the actual transformation. And uh, remember, you know, that transformation was I needed to take um, the probability here that I see, so uh, take that outcome and divide it by one minus that outcome. So this is our, uh, in this case, we're saying the probability of success of this uh, score of one is just 1%. And, um, and, uh, and so we'll take that and divide it by one minus that, which would be 0.99, uh, and then take the logarithm of that ratio. Okay, so that was what they called the odds ratio, and uh, we take the logarithm of that. So that's what I have here, and so you see equals natural log, ln, uh, parenthesis, and I just take the value in C2 divided by 1 minus the value in C2, and I need the parentheses there to make sure I get 1 minus C2 all under the division there. Uh, so I do that and copy it down. And, I, of course, I get the same answer uh, for all the 0.01s and then the same answer uh, for all the 0.99s. And notice if, if these are symmetric like this, they add to 1. Um, actually, notice the values here uh, have a symmetry to them as well. And uh, the top one here is just the negative of the bottom one. And... Uh, Okay, so that's what we do, and now what I want to do is run a linear regression 
with this as my predictor or explanatory variable and uh, this is my response. And I could just do that. I could just uh, set up my um, linear regression and you know when I input the uh, required y variable I just highlight these data and when I input the required x data I input these data. Um, and I could do that except uh, I just I kind of wanted my data side by side so I just copied it over here. Now the way I copied it was I didn't you know copy this whole um, column and then put it over here and paste. I did it did it by formula and the reason I did that was if I change this column because I want to play around with things uh, then this automatically changes over here. And so I just did it equals a2 to get that and copied it down and this one is a equals d2 uh, to get that. Then, uh, now, I had originally I had just skipped a, a column uh, to do this, and then I came back and put this column here. Uh, this column is the predicted, the modeled probability. Uh, you know, so the actual here was 0 0.01 that I used. Uh, the predicted was 0 0.005, so about half of that. And, um, you know, and then it changes as we uh, move up in score. And, um, you know, this was 0.99, this is 0.9975, and uh, again, these are going to be either or, uh, whereas we hope to get a, a smooth model here. Now, we'll look at where that model came from in just a minute. Um, so here, um, I just, uh, let's see if I highlight the whole thing. Uh, I don't know that there's a nice way to, uh, if I double click that, I think, yeah, I just get an error. Um, so we'll have to look up here. Uh, so I just do the linear estimation command. Uh, there's my F uh, column, so that was the uh, transform data there for Y's and my E column for the X's. And um, I get a slope of uh, 2.81 and a y-intercept of negative 8. Um, pretty nice uh, p-value here of 0.72, and, um, uh, and that's very significant at 2 times 10 to the negative 6th. Okay, now to get my predicted, I just needed that slope and the intercept, and again, what we need to do is um, we need e to the, because we were doing natural log here, when we do the algebra and solve, we get e to the um, uh, b1x plus b0, or if you wanted to call it mx plus b for the line, we need e to the mx plus b. Okay, so e to the mx plus b, so we just need uh, this times our x data uh, plus that and uh, raise that to the in the exponent of e and then we divide by one plus that amount so it's a you know longer formula but so here exp of something uh, this exp is uh, whoops got to be careful when you click on stuff um, so I couldn't so I'll come over here uh, the exp is where I'm doing e to something uh, parentheses around it and so here you see h1 e2 uh, plus i1 so h1 is the slope uh, e2 is my x value uh, i1 is the intercept so I'm just taking e to the slope times x uh, plus the y intercept so uh, that's all that is um, and it's over here as well so I took that quantity then divided it by one plus that quantity, and that's our formula to get our uh, predicted probability. And uh, I use dollar signs on the ones because I'm going to copy this down, and I don't want H1 and I1 to change. Um, and so there's my formula, and I copy that on down. And I get those predicted probabilities. Okay. 
now what I wanted to do was, um, so, so that's all there is to it, but there is a question about um, the, this 0 0.01 and 0.99, because notice if I decide, well, you yeah, know, that's close to zero, but I'd like it to be even closer to zero. So I could uh, come in here, and instead of making it 0.99, uh, add a nine there, toss in a zero here, so now it's 0.99 and 0.001. And I hit enter and um, copy those down. Notice then what happens is it's interesting. Um, the R squared doesn't really change. And we'll see why in a moment. And the significance here doesn't really change. Um, and again, Again, we can kind of see why uh, it's really similar to why the R, R squared doesn't change. Uh, but notice the slope and the intercept did. Okay, so they changed by quite a bit. So let's go to Desmos where um, I've already input the data and so forth. Um, I, I had originally done a little bit on Desmos. Uh, but now more is done because, like I say, I've tried to do this twice and uh, it, I, uh, the recording stopped or, or the sound stopped or something like that, right? And, and so uh, let's go here uh, to Desmos. Oh, and I just remembered I need to go find a file to check something else as well. But um, uh, so Desmos, uh, I can uh, put in my data. So I just highlighted... Uh, Oh, wait. Oh, I've got more data here. So uh, we'll have to uh, wait on that. I forgot. This is um, a bigger set of data. Uh, but I will show you. I can. Um, so let's turn off the blue line. And uh, um, I will show you our particular fit that we have right now. Uh, and we'll see what the difference is here when we change those numbers. So. Um, 4.23 for the slope and negative 12.1. Uh, so um, 4.23, so uh, 4.23 and negative 12.11. Okay, so here's the data, and notice that um, with these numbers, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much here. Uh, at um, uh, zero and one, and most of the climbing is just right in in here. And let's go to um, an even uh, closer numbers. Uh, so let me go to nine and uh, so four nines and. Uh, look at that and again you see the adjusted r squared uh, the p-value doesn't really change um, but now I'm at 5.64 and 6 .6, negative 16.15 so 5.64 and negative uh, 16.45 and now notice this is even closer here. What's happening is we're staying down here closer to zero um, for a longer time and then going up steeper and, uh, and then um, getting up here to one much quicker. And uh, we can kind of see that in the predicted probabilities. So notice um, this is very much zero here. This is 0 0.0076 at a 2 and 0.998 at a 4, right? So 2 and 4 are basically 0 and 1, and then all the change is around the 3. Now, if I go back in here and let's go to a 0 0.9 and a 0 0.1, and uh, do that one. Now you see, heck, we're clear up at 0 0.075, uh, 0 0.23, so we're up close to 25% for a two. So it's just made a much smoother transition, 
and this is what 1.346 uh, 1.346 or 1. Point, we'll just go with 1.35 and um, negative uh, 3.85 uh, negative uh, 3.85 and so what you see is you see this is not near as steep a slope you know if I uh, do a couple of undos um, there we go guess I had to do a bunch of undos oh wow I just thought it, it would do much better than that. Uh, I had to do a lot of undos. And, um, but again, notice, you know, it's doing all the climbing right there. And then if I try to redo real quickly here, you see it, it um, smoothed out and the transition is not so abrupt. So that's what's happening as I ch decide how to change these. But notice my p-value and my um, adjusted r squared really didn't change very much. Okay, and now let's go to a bigger data set where we can kind of compare things. And so here I start with that same 0.99 and 0.01. I, he, the a change I made here is that I can just change it here and everything will change automatically. But other than that, I simply have 100 data items now. Uh, so it goes down to 101. This had uh, 53 positive outcomes. I just was curious what that was. Uh, but again, everything else, it, it just does the same. And so that's the actual data I have in um, Desmos. And so let's look at how its values here compare. So this R squared is about uh, 52 percent or uh, 0.518 there, 0.519. Um, a slope of 2.46 and a slow and an intercept of negative 655. So 2.46. Uh, so we'll put that in there. And uh, negative. Uh, 6.55 and let's turn this back on to see how they compare and well they compare pretty well uh, definitely better up here than at the bottom um, <clears throat> but in one way you can say well it's it's steeper because you see it takes a little longer before it starts heading up and then it crosses over and, and is on top up here so it was a little um, bit steeper than what we have here. Uh, now here, notice uh, the R squared is uh, 0.568. Um, and they came up with uh, 2.092 and negative 5.35. So they're a little bit different. Now, again, we saw I can make mine a little less steep um, by just um, making this say 0 0.95 uh, you know a little bit um, farther away from the 1 and the 0 and now we get what 1.57 uh, I don't remember what we had here uh, oh we had uh, 2 so um, actually that might be uh, uh, not so great, uh, or it might be, well, not so great. It might be, um, I think, 1.57, and um, it might be less steep now than the other. And uh, what negative, well, actually, 1.58 we'll go with, and negative 4.2. We'll go with an 8, and negative 4.2. And yeah, so you see it is, it is less steep, okay? But we'll leave it at that for a moment. Um, and uh, I need to find, I, uh, I forgot to uh, find this, so I'll have to uh, find my links here. 
and uh, I believe this is the link I want regression calculator logistic regression calculator and so I'm going to go here and I just did a, a search for logistic regression calculator and this will let me do a couple columns here I put the Y values in first and then the explanatory variable there um, and you see it will um, produce this now we're used to seeing probability as, as e to the um, b1 or beta 1 they have uh, b1x uh, plus uh, b0 uh, or sorry e to the negative of that uh, no no positive sorry um, and then divide by 1 plus that well if you um, change uh, if I divide through top and bottom by that top number uh, this is what you get. So this is our model. This is the same model. It's just a different way to write it up. And uh, if you like this better, you are more than welcome to uh, write it with the one on top and then just the negative exponent on the bottom. Okay, so we need our y values and our x values. Uh, so uh, our y values, we'll take the original y values here. And I'll do a control C for copy. Uh, come over here and do a control V for paste. And then come back here and highlight this column. So there are my X values. Do another control C for copy. Uh, another control V for paste. And so there I have my data. And I say calculate. And uh, <clears throat> Notice it comes up with uh, uh, one uh, what 1.89 uh, for um, its uh, constant. So let's look at 1.89. Well, actually, it's about 1.90 by the time I round. So we'll go with 1.90 and minus 4.87. We'll look at that here. Uh, uh, what did I say? 9, 1.90, and negative 4.78 or 8.7. I'm not good with numbers. 8.7. So um, change those to an 8.7. And you see, they agree pretty darn well. And um, And so... You know, what I might do is since these two uh, separate things, now notice they do not give exactly the same answer. Um, uh, and the problem is I can get some information. I get a p-value, which is basically zero, which is what we had. Um, they don't seem to give it an r-squared. Now, they give this chi-squared, but I... Um, that's the chi-squared number. I, I don't think uh, that relates to an r-squared. Uh, I would have to look that up. But, I, you know, I don't, I don't think that is um, doing a similar thing as our r-squared. Uh, it's calculated a different way, but that doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't reflect something similar. Uh, but I would have to look that up. I, I, don't, I don't think it does. Um, I think they're just using a chi-square test for uh, their p-value. Um, uh, and they're using a chi-square goodness of fit uh, test, which um, we could go into that, and so we're, we're just not going to. Um, we, we have used the chi-square goodness of fit uh, in this class, but we, we have not used it to check models, uh, which you can, though. So, um, okay, so... Uh, they get a small p-value like us. Uh, they got these coefficients. So the question is, uh, can we get in between like a 1.9 uh, for our slope and a 2.0? Um, you know, what would that mean? And um, so, you know, I can try some things like, you know, oh, what if I go 0 0.925? Uh, uh, ooh, that's, you know, that was in the wrong direction, right? So... Uh, I was at um, 
uh, how about 0 0.975 and you see I'm at 1.96 so I'm in between the um, uh, where's their slope here again no, I can't find it oh right there sorry uh, I'm in between the 1.9 I guess I've got it here 1.9 and the 2.1 ish I'm at about 2 and yeah actually that's what I found for the most part um, using uh, instead of a 1 using a 0.975 and instead of a zero using a 0 0.025 seems to uh, give me about uh, the same coefficients, uh, at least very similar coefficients uh, to um, what I get in these uh, separate models. I'm in between them, so you know that that's pretty good, and we can see they they match pretty well. Uh, so I got a 1.96, so let's call this a 2. And um, and what was the intercept? Minus 5.22. Um, 5.22. And so you see, you know, it, it fits very well uh, also. I mean, as far as um, being very similar to the uh, uh, decimals. Now, I do not know what algorithm Desmos uses here, um, and I do not know what algorithm they use here. Uh, obviously, they use something a little different than our heur heuristic. Now, the thing is, um, linear regression that we are using uh, is what I'll say mathematically very straightforward and um, everyone should get the exact same answer if they're using linear regression. However, for logistic regression, uh, again, remember that I had to use a heuristic here. Um, in other words, I had to change the data, right, uh, from zeros and ones uh, to the 0 0.25 and 0.975. And, and so I wouldn't expect to necessarily get the same answer as if somebody did uh, the least squares uh, exactly and um, uh, because that is not quite the same as, as what we did um, and again that's the idea of a heuristic a heuristic means I, I should get an answer pretty close to the right answer uh, a good enough answer and so forth but um, not necessarily the answer but notice uh, these two different technologies differed. So they may be using a slightly different algorithm to, to solve that least squares problem. And I don't, don't know what those are. And, and so when, as soon as you get into more complicated things like logistic uh, regression, um, different technologies may give you very slightly different answers. Okay. Um, but again, we see the p-values are basically the same. R squareds are not too far off. Uh, this is a 0.5657, and again, we were at, uh, what, 0.52-ish? Yeah, 0.52. So 57% versus 52% uh, of the variation explained by each of the models, respectively. And um, so that's fine, and really, what you are interested in is on this model, so we get these predicted uh, probabilities. The real question is, where's my cutoff? If I'm trying to choose who gets a kidney and who doesn't, where do I put the cutoff? And that's actually a different question. And, um, and so that would be like, um, let's say I set the cutoff at 0.6. Whoops. Uh, I'm going to run down here and uh, type in y equals 0 0.6. And so what you see here is <clears throat> the slight difference in these two models is that if my threshold is 0 0.26, then um, uh, what happens is under the blue, which was the 
uh, Desmos long, uh, curve here, their prediction, uh, that says I hit 0.6 at a score of 2.755. Okay, so if these could take on values of fraction and, and so forth, then I would say yes. If you get a 2755, then we will set you up for a kidney transplant. Uh, but here it's 2.813. And so um, we see that there is a slight difference in the score it takes. Not a huge difference. And, and that's the thing is... I, these are all, you know, this stuff's all based on randomness and so forth. Anyway, um, you know, I'd be pretty happy with that little bit of difference. Now, if you happen to have a score of 2.755 uh, versus someone else who had a score of 2.813, uh, you would not be happy with the difference in the models. Uh, but again, that would probably be a, a very small thing. Um, and, and so that's the best we can do. Uh, and again, using this model, we get something else. Now, what I'd like to do is go back again to the sensitivity part. So let's just uh, check the slopes again. If I go back to, a, uh, say, a 0.99, uh, so 2.46 and 6.55, uh, so 2.46. And 6.55. And notice uh, that, you know, the lower my threshold, uh, the more it's going to make a difference uh, with these uh, two things. But for a threshold in here, so um, I'll, uh, uh, all that's changed is the red. So I'll click, oops, I didn't want to do that. I'll click there. Uh, now that was uh, 2.813. Now it's moved a little bit to 2.827. So it did move it a little bit, but actually had, had the threshold been up here, it might have moved it more to the left because again, it made it steeper. Um, but for thresholds, probably mid-range, again, my choice of values here you know, it, should I use 0.99 or 0.975 or whatever? Um, it it's really not going to matter in 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 a practical sense. It's not going to be a big enough difference uh, to change things. And and so the real question is, where do you set your threshold? And we might be able to look at that. It is not something in the text, so we will have we would have to do some extra stuff to look at it. Uh, I just, I don't know that we'll have time, uh, but um, uh, this, this is the idea, so I can, I can plot my probabilities, I could uh, set my threshold, if I'm given a threshold, you know, I could go in here and then check uh, what score do I need, and uh, according to this, I need a score of 2.827 if I went with the 0.99s, uh, and if I put this back to the Two in the, uh, I think it was 4.22. Um, uh, no, it couldn't have been 4.22. That would be very bad. Ah, 5.22. Okay. Um, 5.22. Uh, there again, we see that, um, you know, we, we have our 2.813 for our method. Okay, so we can do this, and of course the thing is, um, we we're looking at our particular method because we want to look at multiple regression, and we can't uh, do that here for sure. I can't I can't do more than one column, so uh, that would just be too complicated. Because uh, again, we could use multiple regression to produce a single score. And then, oh, sorry, here, a single score, and then use that with the data and use this calculator, but um, that's too hard. Uh, that, that just would take too much. And, and so uh, we, could, we probably could do it here because notice I just tell it what model I want. And um, 
uh, oh, and just so we can see, notice that if I uh, make that a 1 and I put a minus in front of there, um, and, oops, and have it uh, do that model, uh, we get that same model. Okay, it doesn't change. So um, that is the same model as this, uh, so we could do it that way. Uh, and um, Desmos will certainly let us add more columns of data here, um, but it never gets, gives us a p-value on the coefficients, so that's a problem. Uh, it only gives us an r-squared. We could compute an adjusted r-squared from that. Uh, but I also don't know its algorithm, so, you know, this, this is not the way to go. Um, we could always, you know, check it when we're done, uh, but it is uh, not, you know, we could add all those columns and put that in here uh, and check it when we're done, but um, we, don't, uh, uh, we don't really have a, a good way to use this. So we're kind of stuck with our method. Uh, this way because all I have to do to add uh, more columns uh, is, you know, put them in here. The transform data doesn't change. Uh, that's always the same. And so instead of a single score, I could have lots of columns for my predictors. Okay. So I think I've uh, exhausted about everything there. Uh, and that is a video on uh, using um, the spreadsheet. So uh, this was a bit delayed because of problems, but I'm hoping this one worked.